Okay, welcome everybody. Here we are in Belgrade, Serbia, the hip and happening capital of the country of Serbia. Nice little fun map here. You can see that it uh, straddles the Danube and the Sava River. I'm standing here at a minor church. It's called the Orthodox Church of the Ascension. And here we're going to start our adventure and find out. Is this the cool hip happening city that it's cracked up to be? Is it a good place to, uh, to check out as a tourist? Is it a good place to live maybe as a digital nomad or an expat? Now, we're not going to have as much time here as we did in Krakow or Budapest. So we're going to get basically um, just a rough feel for the city. We're going to see if we can find some good places to eat, check out some tourist sites, and get the general vibe of the town for you. But for more in-depth research, we're going to have to come back or you're going to have to come back. My friends, American, welcome to Serbia in Belgrade. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the National Museum, right? National Museum, yes. Right. Uh, and uh, oh, the uh, National Theater oh, so right. built by this guy on course. Uh, so around the turn of the century, 1900 something? Uh, Late yeah. 18th. Yes, yes. Right. right. And this is the statue of Milos Mihailo. Mihailo. Yes, in the, during his reign, Turks abandoned uh, Serbia and uh, he built the theater, he was very good. But he was assassinated right. in one uh, Belgrade park. And in a park? In a park, yes, he was walking and ambushed. Really? But I heard it was by another political party, right? Uh, another family. Some very stupid people who was completely unorganized, so... Did they stab him or shoot him or shoot what? Him. Oh, okay. Wow. It's probably really lovely in summer too. It's actually not bad right now. We're in December and we got a great day, 55 degrees. So next we're going to go to Nez Mihailova Street, which basically means Prince Michael Street. It's the prince that we saw in the statue, the uh, freedom fighter. Serbian freedom fighter, and the, it's pretty much the main pedestrian only street here in Belgrade, full of shops, stores, restaurants. Let's take a look. basically goes up to you and pushes you out of the way. <laughs> okay, welcome to our place here in Belgrade, Serbia. I'm actually really liking it so far. I just got a nice relaxing massage. Um, it wasn't the cheapest, but I think it was um, $55, so you can find st that rate in the U.S., but whatever. Um, I liked walking around the city, and I want to show you our Airbnb. We got this Airbnb for $44 a night. Now keep in mind, that comes out to about $1,300 a month, so it's similar to what we paid in Krakow, Poland. But we're only here for a week, so rates are usually higher the shorter amount of time you're there. I'm sure if we wanted to find a place for a month, we could definitely get it cheaper. But we're basically paying a nightly rate, $44 a night. We got a two bedroom, the beds seem comfortable, the place looks really cute, the location is great. So let's take a look at what we got for $44 a night in the lovely city of Belgrade, Serbia. Nice place to eat, already supplied by me with the Belgrade map. I love maps, need maps everywhere. Got some bottled water because we don't drink local water usually. No insult to the local people, but I find that every every city has different water and my stomach might get upset. If I'm there for a short time, I can't get used to it, so we get bottled water. Um, not an American style fridge. In the US, these are fridges that your parents give you when you go to college. <laughs> but they're very common in Europe and it should be just fine for a week. Um, Cute little stove set up, microwave, stove, no oven. The bathroom is uh, tight, but nice. Um, 
This is not the fault of the host because this is the deal. In a lot of Europe, but especially Eastern Europe, they haven't caught on to the shower yet. It's not a shower if you have to hold it, right? You don't have to hold the rain when it showers over your head. I call this the handheld hose down. So you basically have to hold it in your hand and shower your hair. Europeans are going to be like, of course, because they're used to it. But Americans are going to be like, what the F? So there's your handheld hose down. Very common. Washing machine. And mine has a little balcony, a standing balcony, where you stand and make proclamations. Like, there we go. And Israel's room has the cutest little desk cubicle. I just love it. Let me see if it's, is it better if I turn this light on? Yeah. And Israel has a really cute balcony that we'll have to show you during the day. It's basically got a little nook, a breakfast nook out there. And I just think it's pretty, it's a pretty cool place for $44 a night. If you ask me. Pretty cool city so far. Welcome to Serbia. <laughs> so one of the things that's been a little bit frustrating here in Belgrade is unlike Poland where we were, Budapest and Romania, there are no apps for taxis or cars. For example, there's no Uber. There's not even Bolt like they had in Krakow and Poland and Hungary. They have a couple other apps that I've been suggested by locals, but they do not work with an American number. They probably don't work with a foreign number at all. So basically, if you're not from Serbia, it's almost impossible to get a taxi. It's really, really, really hard. So that's been really frustrating so far and sets it apart from the other cities we've been to. If you're in a restaurant or if you're in an establishment, they can usually call a taxi for you. And they're not that expensive, three or $4 to get around town but there's pretty much no way for you to get a taxi on your own if you're not from here. Unless maybe you have a phone plan that allows you to make free calls and then you call the taxi company yourself. Then again, they might not speak English. So the bottom line, very difficult city to get around, uh, at least for us so far on this short trip. They do have a lot of buses and some trolleys and trams. We got on a tram once and we couldn't figure it out. <laughs> we're, we're, we're actually pretty good at figuring it out, but we couldn't. The card reader wasn't working. Um, it didn't say what stop we were at, so as far as transport, uh, it's got a lot of room to grow. And in case you're wondering, oh, I'll just walk out onto the street and hail a taxi. Yeah, I thought that too. Didn't work. Standing out in the cold and rain, they drive by. Uh, it was not efficient at all. I walked several blocks before I could find a taxi. Eventually, the one time I really needed one, I ended up finding one and then he overcharged me a lot. So then I went to another one and he didn't overcharge me really hit or miss, really difficult to hail a taxi on the street. So that solution didn't really work either. So there's lots of little Orthodox churches all over here in Serbia. The people here seem pretty religious. Um, you definitely see young people, old people coming in and out and performing the ritual motions. So it seems to be a seriously religious country. Um, and I've also heard that too. Very beautiful, very cute little church. I really like the, uh, the way the Orthodox do the mosaics and stuff, so hopefully we'll check out a bigger cathedral too. Okay, here we are at the Kalamegdan Fortress. This is the first entry gate. This is one of the top tourist sites of Belgrade, and we wanted to check it out and show it to you today because it's one of our last nice days. Okay, what tastes best, do you think? Probably pistachio? Is that good? <laughs> pistachio. Ah. Can I have a little bit of sprinkle? <laughs> I don't know what don't it. So <laughs> this is Kravnica. <laughs> Can you give it to him? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, let's try. Oh, my. oh yeah. It's actually really good. You can tell with the first bite. Lots of sugar and fat, just what I like. <laughs> Kravnica. This is 
called the Stambul Gate. What does Stambul sound like? If you think about it, it sounds like Istanbul because this was the gate that would point you towards Istanbul, which was the main route at the time. Obviously, Turkey occupied Serbia and Belgrade for hundreds and hundreds of years, so the most important place to go would have been Istanbul. Wow, we got this place to ourselves. And it's a beautiful day, it's actually in the 60s. Here in November, end of November, 2021, Omicron on the way, <sighs> maybe. But this is one of the oldest parts of Kalamegden, which is the fortress here in Belgrade. And the date up here, this is called Despot's Tower, and it's 1400. This is one of the most famous sites in Belgrade. It's called the Roman Well. It's not Roman. <laughs> it's, it's an Austrian well from about oh, a couple thousand years after the Romans. I guess they just called it that at some point closed now. This actually friendly guard is there standing watch to make sure that no tourists can get inside except I believe the groups that are allowed in. I think it's closed as of October. But uh, it's an Austrian well from the 1700s. As far as fortresses go, this is a nice fortress. Okay, so if you come to Kalamegdon Fortress in Belgrade, try not to do a quickie version of it. We came here both during the day and both during the night, and we feel like we always discovered something new because it's uh, it's really vast, really big fortress over the crisscross of two rivers, the Saba and the Danube. Here we are at a very old church called Svetka Petka, which I want to look up more because there's so many mosaics, beautiful mosaics inside, and if they are as old as they look, it's a pretty amazing work of art, even if they're modern. It's still nice mosaics, so we'll have to look that up. We didn't look it up yet. We're just following a little guide from my lonely planet around this fortress. And I really recommend checking it out every nook and cranny. Uh, I gave a donation and I get some holy water, which is uh, from a spring. Apparently they built this church on top of a spring, so the lady told me if I take a little sip of it each day for the rest of my week here, I'm basically gonna be Superman by the end. So that's, that's what I'm expecting. You need some holy water from the spring. I might save some for you. Leave it in a comment. Okay, here I am standing behind the statue. This is the Victor statue or Victor monument. It's probably the most prominent, commonly photographed picture postcard spot in Belgrade. It's at the tip of the Kalamagdan Forest, overlooking where the River Saba and the River Danube come together. Most important spot in the city, especially for tourists. And basically, you are looking at a guy's butt crack. Welcome to Belgrade. <laughs> Welcome to another beautiful site here in Belgrade. Yesterday we went to Kalamegdan Fortress, which I loved day and night. Lots of things to see and explore. And today we're at another site. This is the largest Orthodox cathedral anywhere in the Balkans. And if you're like my mom asking, what are the Balkans? The Balkans are some mountains north of Greece, but when you use the word Balkans, you're talking about a whole area, many countries. Serbia, Bosnia, North Macedonia, uh, Albania, Montenegro, and more. So this is the largest Orthodox cathedral, probably the largest cathedral in the Balkans because they're mostly Orthodox. To me, it looks a little bit like a mosque, but that's probably just the influence and the cross influences of the area. It looks very old and beautiful. It's not old, it's just beautiful. It was built in 1989. That's actually when it was finished. Uh, it was started earlier, I think, a little bit before World War II. And it is called the Saint Saba, or maybe in English we would say the Saint Saba Cathedral. So let's take a look around and inside. Wow, what a stunningly beautiful cathedral. I'm really impressed. These are actually two of my favorite colors, gold and blue. They did an amazing job of it. So there's something to be said about a cathedral that is uh, built in more modern times. They're able to take use of modern technology and really do a stunning job with the colors. This is an absolute must-see, do not miss. If it's your once-in-a-lifetime chance and you're really into Orthodox cathedrals, you might want to wait till they're not under construction. But if you're anywhere near Belgrade, make sure to stop by and check it out.
dobrodošli u Srbiju.